Hello, Peter here. In the last episode, we came as far as that we now can start implementing our first lighting feature. So open the SDL component, and this is where we were. The first thing we're going to do is to create a function. And the function is called set ambient light. It doesn't take any inputs and we also need some variables uh, there are settings for the ambient light basically so let's create those variables the first one is a flag if we want to use it or not so simulate ambient light which is a boolean and let's create a category for these kind of settings let's make that SDL the next one we want is the ambient light color I think would be a good one to have next ambient light now let's do intensity first the ambient light intensity this is a float and we want it in the SDL group as well. And the last one is the ambient light color. So ambient light color. And that one is a linear color. So let's search that one linear color there it is and also that one we will put in SDL group all of them should be public and let's compile this quickly so we can set some defaults well for the color zero is okay the light intensity we can leave that at zero as well uh, I think yeah the simulant well that is false so that is good I think the defaults are good as they are okay let's um, drag out our simulate ambient light this is the flag if we're going to use this feature or not and what I want to do with that is to select a float And the float we're going to select is either our ambient light intensity. So we get that one. So if it is set, we use ambient light intensity. If we are not using ambient light, we can leave. We're going to select zero here. Right. Then we have the ambient light color. Let's get that one. And let's multiply that one with a float. And the float we're going to multiply it with is of course this one. So this will give a light color with a certain intensity and only if simulate ambient light is set otherwise it's just zero now this is a value now we can take our dynamic material instance let's get it and let's set a vector parameter and the name of the parameter is as you might remember al underscore color and that we want to do straight from here and the value is the one that we just calculated and that basically is the function we don't need a return node here because we're not returning anything so this would set the ambient light parameter 
uh, in our material. So let's see if this is working in some way. Save it. Now in the event graph, what the only thing we need to do, and it's the very first thing we're doing, is just call that function. So set ambient light is the only thing that's happening right now in the uh, SDL tick. Let's compile this and save it and close this window. Now let's have a look at our sphere here. Let's add our SDL component to the static mesh. It already has a blob shadow, but um, now we're adding our newly created component. Now we have the group SDL here, and it has simulate ambient light, ambient light intensity, and ambient light color. Now let's take the light color first to be one. Actually, I think one would have been a, a much nicer default value anyway. But we can fix that later on. The light intensity. Um, let's make that one. And simulate ambient light. Let's save that and see what happens if we play this. Well, it's not black anymore. And it's a very, sh very light color it's full light well not full but too light to be nice but uh, hey it works let's make this slightly better by taking an ambient light intensity of 0.3 and now just to have some fun let's make it greenish instead okay Play. Oh yeah, it has now a very hawkish color. <laughs> Let's try to get it into this room here. Oh. All right, I just drag it in. It's easier and faster. So it's now in there somewhere. Okay, play. Because what I want to do is to push it into a very dark corner where there is no light. And you will see it will remain lit. And that is sort of an, yeah, a simulated ambient lighting. Okay, very nice, that works. So that is the first feature of our simulated dynamic light package working. Awesome. So yeah, this is a very simple feature, but it can be quite handy. For us right now, it uh, is also a good test for, for the various components of the system. We have the level data actor generating the SDL ticks, and the SDL component taking the material of the object and creating a dynamic instance of it. And then we have our material itself that we enabled for SDL, by adding those uh, those nodes to it and, and our material function. In this particular case, the material function though is not uh, visible. Uh, it does stuff, but it, it is not. It has a non-visible effect. That will all change in the next episode, by the way. Let's uh, get my sphere back where we can see it. And also, let's have a look at the SDL level data actor. Oh, the only public property is initialization delay. That means we forgot to set the tick interval public. Let's fix that. Yeah, you see, SDL tick interval is not public. So make it public and then put it after the initialization delay. So it's nice and grouped. 
uh, what is the default value? Um, zero is great. Compile and save. Close this one. Now we have it here. Now what does zero mean in this case? Zero means that it is as fast as the frame rate. Uh, I have no idea what I'm running at right now here. Show FPS. Ah, that's about 119, 120. And uh, that means that for every frame there will be an, an update. Or in our case, that means that in every frame there will be an SDL tick event on our component. Now for the shadow, for instance, that is quite nice because you will see it immediately if you start uh, making that less. But for the objects to react on environmental light, so, uh, such as uh, dynamic, of, uh, directional lights and spotlights and whatever not, we don't really need always that kind of update speeds. So it is quite okay to put a value in that. And basically what you're, the value there is the time between the ticks. So if we now have 120, well, it will be quite enough uh, to have this only like at a, a frame rate of about 30 frames per second or, or 30 times per second. The frame rate is still, of course, whatever it is. But we can make it so that the SDL tick is only uh, called 30 times a second or 24 or 25. So if we want to have 24 or 30, let's say 30, we would put in 0 0.0 and the rest is threes, right? Something like that. That, that would be 30 times a second. Um, it's 1 divided by 30. And if you want to have 25 times per second, it would be 0 0.04 and 24.04166666. Whatever. This, is, uh, this will work. Uh, just save it. In this case, it doesn't really matter because the ambient light is not changing in this uh, situation. It is just the greenish light. Okay, well, for now I think uh, we can leave it at this because um, the next episode we will start, well, we, we will not only start, we will actually implement the directional light feature. And uh, this will be a bit more complex, so uh, I think it's best to do that in its own episode. So until then, bye-bye. Hello, Peter here again. Just wanted to say thanks for watching this video. Please let me know what you thought of it in the comments. Below there are links to other episodes in the series and don't forget to subscribe so you are the first to know when the next episode is up. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!